good win last week by by liquid mercury he looks he looks really exciting yeah he's a he's a he's a nice type of horse um progressive certainly uh it was an impressive one you know the handicap terms um and yeah uh, yeah he's a horse that obviously um uh, traveled as well and group three winner in south africa so it was pretty good for south african racing and form as well seems to stay really well so you've got options with him going ahead yes stays really well yeah he's uh you know i, I think he's also even you could drop back to 10 furlongs and you could step it up to 280 he's quite versatile so you could look at the, the city of gold or the nadash yeah, trophy we've got a number of options for him um you know he's still quite well rated actually i think he went up seven pounds i'd still say he's got a few pounds in hand mm, okay um and then Forry's waltz has been one of the, the stars of the carnival really what an improvement he's shown yeah, well, we brought him here last year for, you know, the three-year-old dirt races and he went wrong behind and things just didn't happen for him, you know. So he was just one of those that didn't settle at all. Uh, we took him back to England, um, just got him going there right throughout the summer, just cantering and playing around with him, then brought him back here uh, at the start of the winter and um, done really, really well. He's going to have to raise his game. I mean, we're probably looking at Jabal Hatter with him, Group 1, going to be tougher um, he had the two starts I just freshened him up a little bit we'll give the javel at a turn see what level if, he, if he's at group one level I mean I think he's I think he's a decent sort you know he's uh, and he's probably a horse we haven't really got to the bottom of yet I mean, he's only had a five starts I think or six starts in his life so you know there's still there's still improvement to come he's a you know he's a plus rating is he a horse that you might think about, sort of Hong Kong, something like that with him later on? I think on? so, yes, there's no doubt. Um, because he's just so honest, versatile, keeps improving, um, always wants to, you know, fight the finish. If he gets into a finish, he's, you know, he's going to scrap. So, uh, And I think he's tough, so he's going to be one of those you can get on the road. And you perhaps don't know, as you say, quite how good he is, because he doesn't win by very far. Exactly. And I, but, I, you know, I think um, he probably had be at his best over 10 furlongs. But we'll have a go at the Javelata and see, you know, if it's going to be he's going to be good enough for World Cup night. I think he will be, um, certainly to, to run a huge race. The thing is about horses like him is that when they really fit and well in the carnival, sometimes they run even better than they are, just because they're in such a good space. So um, he's one of those I think we probably uh, campaign. Okay, staying on the turf, Tanath won, well, won in the end in, in Qatar and, and then, then ran well. And then last time, I think was it just was a bit disappointing. Yeah, he's had two probably disappointing runs back, but again, you know, one's got to be a realistic if you look at the form. Um, the horse he dead heated with, finished about seven or eight lengths back. Quarterback, uh, who was right there just behind him, ran well with half a guinea when they all cantered and ran a place again the other night. I'm not 100% sure the Qatar form is that good. Um, so, you know, sometimes you want to beat yourself up about horses not running as well as you expected. But, you know, with hindsight, maybe that's, uh, you know, that's just the form. Um, He's a young, immature stay at this stage of the game, so you know I would expect him to get a little better than he is. Uh, but I mean, we'll have another go at Qatar with him over the mile and a half. Mm, which really does look to be his trip, the way that he. It should be his trip, yeah. You know, if you look at it as well, I mean, I, I've never seen a horse draw the outside gate so often. You know, so we'd like just once to get a draw and get him in behind and sit. You know, not sit three deep or have to come from from last. He's never really had it his own way ever. Sometimes you can get away with it in a lesser division, but as you get up the divisions, giving giving start and you know from bad draws is not ideal and it and it just you know it's it's not gonna help you to win. Is he one for another trip to England, maybe? He he'd probably go back to England, yeah, why not, yeah. I mean he's really a, yeah, although he's four, he's he's very he's an immature four year old. Um I think he's probably got a a, a, a race at a good level in England in him. Mm, okay. Golden Soul is a horse who intrigues me. He probably his best form is on the on the dirt if you take his Kentucky Derby second, literally. But that was a great run, wasn't it, last time? He ran very good. Um, he's only been here just, on, just over a month, he was, and um, stayed on well. He doesn't look yet as well as he should, but I mean, that's just because we haven't really had the time with him. Um, and we're running out of time, funny enough, in the carnival. I'd love that to be in a mile and a half handicap in two weeks' time would have been spot on for him. But um, as it is, there's a 10 furlong handicap and then there's the Nat Al Sheba trophy. We've got to look mm -hmm. at one of the two. Uh, as for the dirt, I don't know. You know, he, if you look at his form, he ran second in the Kentucky Derby, but they, they went 45 seconds for the first 800. Mm -hmm. They went flat out and something had to stay on, which he did. 
Um, I see they did switch him off the dirt there and his form seemed to improve or he ran well anyway on the turf. Um, right now we're not tempted to try the dirt but you know I suppose um, we're going to have to have a crack at one of those races on um, I think it's the 3rd of March or it's the Thursday meeting anyway yeah. before the Super Saturday where there's a handicap in the Nadal Sheba Trophy. Mub's Hedge is the one we're all excited about. I detected a a note of amusement when you were interviewed about him him last week and there was a, an excellent article on, on your website saying don't worry about that run first up that was what you expected yeah well you know i, I mean I, I don't know if people have got earplugs in when you say that you think the horse is 80 or 85 percent fit they just don't understand it that's the way we train we like to build them up with racing and that's exactly what we're doing with him um i was happy with the, where he was uh, he stayed on well in the mile uh, the funny thing is, is that the time he's gotten beaten here yeah, was over a mile by Maftu. Mm. Uh, and as soon as he went further than that, he, you know, he took that form to eight and ten lengths. So he runs in the Mactum Challenge. Um, I'm expecting a, a really big improvement. He'll be very close to, uh, you know, sort of 90, 95%, very close to uh, full fitness then. Uh, he's done very well. He's come out of it well. He's training well. I'm, I'm very happy with where I'm at with him. If he's good enough, he'll be right there. Did he exceed your expectations in America? Uh, well, we never really had it easy, you know. I mean, three training centres in 31 days, travel. Um, it's never easy. And, um, uh, you know, if we ran him after the Belmont again, I thought he would have actually just about gone on to win. Um, because we had to back off him after the derby, then wind him up into the Kentucky derby. And then he gets beaten nine lengths there. Then he gets beaten seven lengths in the, in the Belmont, improved still. And you know, with the Belmont, with hindsight, we probably should have run him to run a place, not run him to take on American Ferrer. But you know, we got a bit excited and thought, what the hell, we yeah, we might as well try, you know. And you know, he was all over him, sort of on the turn, mm -hmm. round the turn, coming into straight. But then, of course, um, you know, it took its toll, and obviously the, the real class was kicked in and, and ran away from us. But I thought it was a huge effort, and given the form, um, it's probably the you know frosted American Ferrer keen ass all those horses those are the best horses in america right now on dirt well if not they're the best then they're in the top five so that form is huge uh, in my opinion so uh, you know i expect him uh, to improve on that uh, and he was still quite heavy uh, condition wise so he's coming down nicely in the scale he's, he's going the right way i can't complain how impressed were you with with frosted here very impressed i thought he he looked extremely well uh, he had a nice sort of calm way about him and uh, very very professional in the race i mean he, you know he sat up there and he just he just ran away from him look we've got to understand that um, carnival form dirt form especially and american dirt form is there's there's many many lengths and um that, that is you know when you get a horse like frosted yeah you just realize how below uh, the american group one form the carnival form you know the the, the group two and group three form is but it's good to have those horses here because you get a bit of a yardstick. You, you know very quickly whether you're good enough or not. When you see those real uh, quality horses mm -hmm. that uh, Kieran's um, brought over here, the horses in the mile, the same mm -hmm. thing. It's all solid American Group 1 form and uh, it's, it's fantastic to have those horses running in the carnival. Bearing that in mind, are you going to try and get more horses from America next year? Well, you know, we actually... You know, after last year's carnival, uh, I said to a couple of my clients, uh, this, is the only way, this is the only way we've got to go. The dirt's the business, we've got to get out there and get the horses. And sadly, um, they were, you know, they, some of them have just been a little reluctant to, they'll wake up now, but it's, you know, we're, we're, we're a year down the line where we should have jumped in last year, April, May. We were offered a few and, um, you know, sadly, um, uh, some of our blokes didn't jump to the occasion to get in and, 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 and buy those horses. So. But I think, you know, you take a bloke like Druber, he took the gamble, went over there and bought a few, and uh, it's paid off for him, you know. And um, it's not rocket science. At the end of the day, those are the type of horses we need. We need that, that American dirt horse. If you want to be competitive in, the, in your Mactum challenges and World Cup night on dirt, I mean, the dirt is here, it's here to stay. Uh, even your handicaps. Um, those horses are bred for it. It's a different beast, you know. So uh, it's 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 an almost no-brainer. But it, yeah, sometimes it's hard to get people to see things as you see them. You know, they they take a little time in getting it to sink in. <laughs> On a completely different tack, Noah from Goa. Will he be here next year? Yes, he comes. Uh, he'll start quarantine now in March. 
Um, hoping to try and have a go to Hong Kong with him if he travels well enough in December. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he'll he'll come across here. He's an interesting horse in that he's he's probably got a chance on dirt. Uh, he's got a sire line certainly that all run well in South Africa on dirt. So I'm I'm thinking he needs a good half a mile horse and I'm keen to start him in a, in a you know like a first leg of the Mac Tomb Challenge um, with him. So uh, and again, he's always awesome. We can switch back to turf. We know he's successful there. But um, he's he's been brought here with a view to having a crack at the dirt as well. Anything else in South Africa at the moment you're particularly excited about in your string there? Well, not really. Well, I've got a lot, of, a lot of young horses. It's very hard to tell. It's very hard to travel a young horse here too because the other absolutely make it. You get a soft fall in rain that really does it, and then you and then you, you know others that just fall in a heap. Uh, Phillies is particularly tough. Um, I mean, we've had in the past fillies like Rihanna that have done well here, but then we've, you know, we've brought other fillies here that just don't settle when they get into the Northern Hemisphere. They just keep cycling. They never really settle down. Um, they're just not themselves. Sometimes it takes a year in the Northern Hemisphere before they really sort of settle down. So it's very tough traveling um, out of the Southern Hemisphere, young horses. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very tempting, put it that way, as tough as it is.